I don't think there's anything else I need to fiddle with, so I'm just going to start, I think. I can pick up where I left off. I can pick up where I left off the last time, if I can remember which character that was. Oh, I must have been Sister Frida. It's another video game. Yeah. Oh, you weren't watching this one last time, were you? No. Uh, the uh, the random unscheduled streams are all sorts of different things. Um, only Hollow Knight is the. Uh, uh, Hollow Knight is only the Tuesday and f Thursday, Friday, uh, scheduled streams. Dark Souls is what I'm doing for casual stuff mostly at the moment, but also... This is video game. You have video game. Video game, video game. If you want video game, you're getting video game. I don't really quite see what the difference is. Now, I can't remember. I think I made it almost to the end of... I made it to the end-ish section of Undead Parish, and then I decided that since I got murdered by a horrible, horrible person and had to start over, I would not bother that time, but I should be able to make it through the Belfry Gargoyles today. Um, I really should probably min-max my weight percentage, because I think I'm getting the medium roll at the moment, and I want to be the speedy roll. These rats are the secret boss of Dark Souls. They are almost impossible to get past. That's not true. They're easy to get past if you know what you're doing. I'm just um, clumsy and impatient. I have actually at times had to run through this entire section of the game while poisoned from the rat poison. Uh, which I, now occurs to me is actually a word that already means something other than what I meant it to mean, but that's fine. Yeah, that's true actually. There's, I think you, unless you're good enough to sprint under the dragon before it kills you, which is difficult as hell, um, you do have to go this way, so. Right, there's a black knight up these steps that I'm not going to go bother. I have actually, yeah, no, I've run through the entire Undead Parish while poison, desperately chugging Estus. Because you can't even get poison cures until later. Which, I guess, is mildly unfair. I never normally accuse Dark Souls of being unfair, because it isn't, generally speaking. It's one of the fairer games. It's just difficult. But the fact that you can't get poison heals until a while after you're first presented with a poison poisoning enemy is mildly just pushing the edge of being unfair. I am using my uh, incredibly janky chat setup once again, where I have it propped up on the desk in front of my screen on my phone. I have no idea which skeleton you're talking about. Oh hey, didn't kill that guy. Hmm. What kind of backstab doesn't kill a guy? It's ridiculous. It's actually easier to fight these guys when they don't have crossbows, because they don't also have shields. I'd forgotten how kind of slow and clumsy you are in Dark Souls as opposed to the later games. Oh hello! Hello, Emerson. Nice to see you. I'm glad you could make it. I want to bait this guy down, but he's not going to join me. Is he just going to forget about me if I leave? Because I still haven't fixed my armour. Is he just going to shoot that wall forever? I guess so. Well, that's what happens when you succumb to hollowing. You ultimately just find your monomania, and then eventually that drains away too, and there's nothing left, and you become a husk who gives up. Because this is a game about despair. So if I can get the backstab on this guy. Yeah. All the knights are a pain in the ass, so I like to give them a pain in the ass. I'm very pleased with how uh, successfully I'm doing the parry repost mechanic. I can't believe that when I first played through this... Oh, I just wish I had orange hair at all. I've got a nice shade of brown generally, but uh, it's still kind of faded from the semi-permanent dye I've been using. 
It'll be lustrous brown again once it grows out fully, but that'll be a while. And I don't really want to do that. Right. In the later games, you have a convenient uh, percentage built in to tell you how heavy your equipment load is. Uh, in Dark Souls 1, you have to do actual mathematics. So I think it's 25% is the, is the margin for the fastest roll, which would be 12.5 equipment load. How heavy are these? Can I get down to 12.5? I can! But I might actually have more armor if I just wear the trousers. <laughs> and the gloves. Do I have any good hats? I do, but that puts me over the percentage. Um, so I guess you're all gonna see how badly I desperately need some moisturizer, which I had plenty of moisturizer, but then I got murdered by somebody, which was unfair. I should probably catch a parry on one of these guys. Oh, that could happen! So the main thing I want to do is get through that passageway over there so that I can go get a bow because that lets you uh, bait out individuals a little bit faster. But yeah, oof, yeah, no, I never used to have trouble with these three guys. It's been so long since I played this regularly. But I'm still, I'm still pretty proud of my, how I'm acquitting myself for someone who hasn't played their favourite game in... God. I played this like once in the last few years. I used to play nothing but this all year. Anyway. I love the wind up on that. It's almost sarcastic. I mean, I, I successfully parried the guy, but um, I didn't catch the timing for the riposte before the other guy hit me because he interrupted my animation. It's fine if I die. There's not much in my bloodstain. This guy's a pain in the ass to fight because you're swinging with your right hand on here, which I think I said last time, but hey, there might be different people. Oh, hello. I was not expecting several people. I was expecting, like, two people. So this is nice. With a bit of luck, when you aggro both of these, they don't fit on the space, so they get in each other's way, which makes them fall off. Or sometimes they just get stuck in a run cycle forever, because this game is janky. Aha! A bit of hard humanity. That's really good to have. So, yep. I've got to remember... Oh, that's way more healing than I thought it was, actually. Because I've never really played the, um... Miracle route. I've always... I've always done... I've done sorcerers, I've done pyromancers, I've done... Uh, fast light fighters, I've done heavily armoured fighters, I've done ranged characters, but I... have never actually done a playthrough using the miracles. I'm extremely sarcastic with my sword. It's uh, a cutting remark, really. That's what I like to fight with. Lots of verbal sparring and actual sparring. Huh. I love that because he was misaligned, he was on a higher step, the animation was misaligned that made it look like stab I just full on stabbed him up the loincloth. Wow. I can catch this guy as well. These are some of the easiest parries in the game. Both the sword and uh, spear hollows have like really big attacks with really long wind-ups that make it easy for you to do this. There's tons of them in this that I don't have any kind of a any kind of a parry timing down on. It's just that you fight these guys throughout the entire game, so you never really get uh, never really run out of uh, what would you call it the. You never get rusty, is what I'm trying to say. Because look at that. He's basically asking you to stab him. I'm making a habit of it, aren't I? That was just convenient, really. Um, that guy's going to stay up there. I can take out the boulder knight, then sprint around the corner, and then try not to die on those guys. Uh, if I have any throwing knives left, I can provoke one of them from range, which will be a bit easier. Good lord, I'm up to eight people. Hello, everybody. That's remarkable. Oh, I, he heard me. Oh. Now, I think... Oh, fucking hell. So... This guy doesn't have a parrying shield, so I should be able to safely uh, wail on him, but... Yeah, hmm. Hopefully, after I've beaten a few more things, I can level up a little bit, little bit more and be a little bit more resilient. But for now, I want to fight him somewhere a bit safer for me. 
I remember when I first started playing this, I had so much trouble with the Balder Soldiers. But, as uh, was reminded to me last time I was playing this, they are actually unable to parry if they have sh the big shields. The guys with the small shields will um, adopt a certain pose and then they'll parry and riposte you, which will usually kill you in one hit. Uh, but... Ah, oh, that guy always sees you, doesn't he? Hmm. Uh, it'd be cool if I get one of their shields, but it's not going to happen. I've already got the knight shield anyway, so I don't need the fully armor-resistant shield. Because, um... Yeah, no, I completely agree. I also think it's kind of hilarious that there's just big holes in the armor. Um, but they don't look like... They don't look like holes that have rusted in or happened from being attacked or whatever. The, there's holes in the, like, thigh plate and the... the was it the calf plate and stuff that looks just kind of like... Uh, someone cut it out to make it look like it had a hole in in like a bad fantasy movie. Oh, I don't have any throwing weapons. I like the boulder shield, but its drop rate is really low. Can I try and aggro one of these and not the other one? Sorry, I was distracted by my housemate gesturing at a pie. <laughs> That she wants to eat. I'm not sure why she's asking me about the pie because it's not my pie. Right, that's all for him. Yeah. Let's not die again. Uh, nope, don't want to use healing magic. The upside to the healing magic is that it's additional healing on top of your free Estus, but also you have to bear in mind that the animation for using the Estus is much faster than using the heal spell. So if you... Yeah, if you want to do that, you'll probably get hit. So it's useful for keeping your Estus topped up rather than for actually using it in any kind of high intensity combat situation. That's a shame, but I have the same problem. And if a recipe ever says this will take 30 minutes, what it actually means is an hour and a half. If it says 20 minutes, it means about an hour. Because what I suspect is that recipes on websites are actually listing the amount of time it takes you to cook the prepped ingredients, not the amount of time it takes for you to chop everything up. <laughs> I love the hollow tock 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 as you run across the wood. Anyway, this is the checkpoint, so we're good now. I'm gonna go get some useful stuff, but before I do that, I want to go see my good friend There he is. Everybody's second most favourite Dark Souls character. Unless you like patches, in which case you're a bad person. Hello. Hmm. It's an onion. Hmm. Forgive me. I was absorbed in thought. I am Ziegmeier of Katarina. Or a gate, I should Oh, whoops, say. I skipped him. The thing just won't budge. No matter how long I wait. And oh... But I waited. So here I sit, in quite a pickle, weighing my off. He's a pickled onion. <laughs> so yeah, everyone loves uh, Siegmeier of Katarina, the beloved Still onion knight. Still closed. So, instead of actually telling you what to do, the game gives you cryptic hints. You're told to ring a bell at the top of the world and at the bottom of the world, and then it's up to you to figure out what to do. This guy is basically. I mean, he shows up a bunch through the game, but his purpose here is to just kind of imply to you that you should probably come back to this gate at some point. Don't, f don't forget it's here. Um, come back and have a go when it's open. I love these trees because they're so... They're so old. This is like PS1 era graphics or PS2 graphics. They're just um, 2D sprites on top of one another. Well, they're not technically sprites because they're not fully 2D, but they're 2D planes intersecting each other if they were... Actually, sprites, they would be genuinely 2D, which means they would always appear the same, always facing you, rather than uh, sort of rotating around the way they do. I do want to reverse my hollowing, which does put me at risk of being invaded again, but uh, that's a risk I'm willing to take. On rare occasions, I've beaten invaders, but usually while a higher level than I am. I've only got one humanity, though, so I think I'll hang on to it. Yeah, I know, right? It's like something from a, from an ancient time. 
My favorite moment in games history was at the point where that kind of started segueing into more modern designs for the way to make trees work. I'm just going to skip all his dialogue. Andrew's great. Uh, so you would get trees where every branch had it had like a couple of intersecting 2D planes on it, but they would all still like sprite towards you and then the branches of the tree and the tree uh, ball? No. The trunk of the tree were all actually 3D models. I mean, Andrew doesn't actually have that amazing of a chest. He's a strong guy, but what I really like about him is that so blacksmiths traditionally have one arm that's bigger than the other because one arm does a lot of work while the other arm holds things and that's true of Andre except if you look closely it looks like his left arm is bigger than his right arm which is the opposite of how that should be so in here there is a mini boss that I am going to hopefully run past because what I want is a longbow and I can get a longbow for free actually it might be the black bow of Faris that's over here so if I just run past him, he can't do anything because he's too big to fit through this hole. Bye. Nobody cares about your lightning rod. Uh, he drops a useful upgrade item, so he's worth coming back and killing when you can. He's also very easy to cheese. It's time to visit the planty place and fight the plant men. Oh wow, I forgot how resilient they are. They go down instantaneously if you have a fire weapon, obviously, but I don't have one. Also, I'm not sure if they're parryable. I don't remember if there are any naturally fire enchanted weapons in the game. Luckily they're really easy to um, stagger, so as long as you keep out of their way and let your stamina recharge, you can just stun lock them. Oh fuck! You can stun lock them to death. Anyway, these extremely useful uh, guys have really high drop rates for... Um, Support healing items, so nothing that actually heals you, but uh, they all drop uh, purple moss and blooming purple moss, which cure poison and the thing that's not poison, toxic respectively, and they also drop red moss, which is used for bleeding effects. But yeah, like I said, these guys are easy to just keep staggered. Huh. Much faster to kill when you use the heavy attack. Now, down here somewhere is what I'm looking for. It might not be on this side. Anyway, this huge open space is uh, the ball of the dark root forest, I think. There's a way around and down, but I'm not quite clear if it's from in here. My draw distance seems kind of low. I thought for sure I had it set higher. Um, anyway, I'm not going to fiddle with that right now. Down here is hidden a another like mini boss, which really is just a powerful enemy. There's not that much of a distinction. Mini bosses aren't really a thing. There's just enemies of varying power levels and actual bosses. Anyway, he's the Silver Knight, and he drops the Silver Knight Halberd if you're very, very, very lucky, which you can then just use to destroy everything in the game. But down here also... Oh, Crystal Lizard. Uh, sorry, Magic Turtle, excuse me. I can catch this one. No, I can't. Fuck. Yes, there we go. So these are rare enemies that respawn in the same places until you kill them one time, at which point they drop a very valuable resource. And um, the main thing is that they will teleport away if you let them. Also, all of your animations miss them as a rule because they're so short. God, I love the magic turtle. Anyway, um, down here might be where the knight is hiding. I cannot remember if there's a different path around the outside of the dark root garden bowl. He might be here. Anyway, there's uh, throughout the game there are the corpses of um, previous iterations of you on former Kalpas of the existence of the universe and uh, they correspond to the starting classes of the game, which means that if you are very lucky, you will find useful starting equipment. Oh no! Alright, so what do I need to be able to use that then? What does it say? Um, minimum 14 dexterity. I can, Yeah, I can get 14 dexterity, that's good. I mean, you joke about crystallizing a lizard, but you've got to bear in mind that that's a very serious problem a lot of people in life genuinely face. Actually, I won't use the feather arrows. Those are worth saving. Uh, yeah, so that's all I came down here for, so I'm actually going to head back up again. Hopefully without aggroing the mini-boss, which I think is over in that corner there. 
The locations of everything in this game are indelibly stamped on my brain, um, but the exact details I tend to forget. So you can actually head off through this whole area and go do an optional boss and actually come around to the other side of a few different areas in the game and do a whole bunch of other content before you push on to the next boss. But I'm not going to because I actually am weirdly tied to going through the game in the correct order. I don't know why. I just... Like, it's entirely possible to go to the lower bell first and take care of that by um, assorted things. Uh, I think you can get there from here. But alternatively, if you have the right key, you can get in the back way and go down early. Which, nope, don't need to go that way. Anyway, there's a ton of good items in this area, especially the Grass Crest Shield, which is a shield which has an enchantment which restores your stamina uh, passively, constantly, which is very effective because stamina is very important. I'm just sprint past him again. The main risk is that if he hits me, I'll probably die. Anyway, unfortunately, I don't have much humanity left, so I can't kindle this bonfire. I only have enough humanity to turn human, not enough to kindle. Um, I am... I do love that Andre is just chilling next to a Titanite demon. Some people theorise that Andre is the um, long-lost son of Gwyn, the god of Cinder. Well, he's now the god of Cinder. He was formerly the god of the sun. Gwyn's eldest son was excised from history and his name was lost as punishment for some unnamed sin. However, he does actually show up in the third game, so... I personally think that the way... Um, the way that this game... People got so obsessed with figuring out the real, pure truth of the narrative of this game is engaging with it in the wrong spirit. I actually really dislike the impulse that so many people ha have of... Um, going, ah, okay, so this means this, and this is really this, in narratives that are meant to be allegorical, or in any other sense not especially taken literally. Um, and that is most true and prominent with Dark Souls, where everybody has analysed every single scrap of dialogue and every piece of text in this game to figure out the real, true, actual meaning of what's happened. But that's not what it's for, and in fact the state of, stated goal of the director is that... Um, Oh yeah, don't worry about it. Laundry disasters are fine. Um, I have no objection to someone dealing with laundry disasters instead of watching my stream. Because I am a, magnan a magnanimous deity, and I will grant you leniency. There we go, now I can use my bow. Uh, I think I also want to top up my vitality a bit. Alright, I need 1800 souls for the next one. I don't think I have enough lesser souls to get that, so I'm going to go downstairs and buy some arrows. It's it's not the hmm. It's more that there's a kind of an obsession an obsession that nerdy types uh, fall for really consistently, and I hate the the nature of that obsession. The idea that um, a story or a narrative or anything like that exists in some kind of um, pure platonic form, which you can seek out and discover. And to some extent, that's true, but I don't really believe that. Um, an author's intended meaning is the like pure form of a text and I believe that a lot of the time that it doesn't exist and it bothers me when people ask authors like oh this character said this did this mean this in relation to this and the actual truth of the answer is that author had no meaning behind that it was just a meaning a, a, a detail to lend a bit of texture to the world um, I don't know I have a really strong opinion about this but it's really really hard to put across in words I'm going to buy arrows. But it's... It's kind of like being beholden to... The belief that every single aspect of something has been planned out in advance and every single aspect must be relevant and important to every other aspect. And I hate it. I hate it so much. Except that things are allegorical. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm pleased to hear that. I still feel like there's several aspects to what I'm trying to say that I'm not putting across, but that is a huge part of it, yeah. And especially with games, as I was saying, like Dark Souls, where Miyazaki is fully on the record in interviews as having said, there is no, there is no secret truth. You cannot, like, there is no, nobody decided Gwyn's son is this guy. 
Gwyn's son is a mystery and you are supposed to figure out your own answer. There is no true answer. Well, he didn't say it about Gwyn's son specifically, but that's the, like, iconic thing. There is no real meaning. There is no true sequence of events. And um, with Dark Souls, that's so clearly apparent in the themes of the game. Well, yeah, I, I don't have an objection to it in the abstract. I, and I, I enjoy doing it myself. I play a narrative experience where I read a book and I'm thinking, oh, what does this mean? What does that say? Both in a thematic sense and in a literal, you know, um, logistical sense of who was where at what time and did what to whom with what. <laughs> well, well, who was watching. Um, but what I think is that there is an absolute slavishness to that in sort of nerd culture in general. Um, which results in things like articles of like, oh, this... This director has said that this background character had this hat on, which meant that he's actually this guy, and therefore that means this and that and the other thing, and it's not. None of that is relevant. None of it matters. None of it is even true. Anyway, um... Eventually, someday I will figure out how to actually verbalise what I'm trying to say completely, because you're all, you're all right and you're all engaging with it correctly, but I... Um, yeah, I don't know, there's something I have real trouble putting into words. Anyway, there is a Bereniki knight here. He is gonna kick my ass. Normally I like to have some firebombs left for him, actually. But I spent them all on... something. Ow! The uh, hitbox for these attacks is like 60 degrees in front of him, so it's pretty easy to get hit. He's easy to dodge, which also, I say, getting flattened, which also means that you can um, just whittle him down. However, you do have to be careful while doing that. He's also not vulnerable to backstabs, presumably because he's large and made of iron. He does stagger at some point. Most enemies are vulnerable to staggering at certain points. If you manage to, uh... there's a really complicated, like, hidden mechanic called poise, and like, your armor and your shield all contribute to it and interact with it in different ways. But basically, if you get hit too much too fast, then a certain threshold based on your armor and stuff is hit, and if that happens, you stagger. So this has actually not been a difficult fight. I just need him to. I don't think he's parryable either. I can never keep track of it. Honestly, um, I'm calling that canon. That is, I'm accepting that into my personal canon of Dark Souls. Here lies Veronica. He died like a fool. Yeah, I do miss that mechanic, but I also think it should have been more literally stated in the game. Um, just like I think that parryable NPC, parryable enemies should be like marked in some way so that you can actually tell if you can parry them. This guy's difficult to fight, so I can't be bothered. Uh, did I not equip my arrows? Oh, how embarrassing. I've come to war prom and I've left my arrows behind. Still, you can just shoot him in the head forever. If I remember correctly, this character design was intended to be used for... Oh, wow. Damn, he went down like a piece of shit, huh? Uh, I remember him being tougher, anyway. The thing about him, that's the channeler. I think he was intended to be one of the bosses, but he was relegated to a minion, and there's only about five of him in the game. Maybe four. Still, uh, while you're shooting him, occasionally the Bereniki's cat... No, nope, these are Balder Knights. Balder, Bereniki... Oh, hey, maybe I can see... Yeah, you see that hole in the back of his thigh? It looks like someone just cut that out to make it look like it was old. Anyway... Oh, you'll see the dance eventually, um, when we get to the depths. That's where I like to let him dance and watch him wiggle. He actually drops his scepter, which you can then do the dance yourself, which is just kind of lovely. So this is a Firekeeper soul. Oh my! 
let's play five years ago i still i went on a whole thing about the iconography of this and what you can infer from it and what it means uh i am way too tired and this is a a work night so i'm not going to do that now but if you look closely you can see that things are being raised up and uh, there are very few female figures in the game so it's unclear and it's believed that this is supposed to be a shrine to um gwyn's unnamed and mysterious wife because the gods in the game are Gwyn, who is the big god, the large man who did the sad fire thing. And, um, oh, you didn't know that? Yeah, uh, this female figure isn't, doesn't really appear very much elsewhere. Um, we see statues of Gwyn, we see statues of, uh, we don't see statues of Gwendolyn, but she's around. We see statues of Guinevere. Oh, great, a, uh, a bot. I don't know how to ban those. I think they, ha I think they get banned automatically, maybe. Um, but yeah. I should look up how to do that before tomorrow. Oh god, my next schedule stream is tomorrow. Anyway, but yes, so uh, based on the fact that she's carrying a baby, she's often considered to be the unnamed wife of Gwyn because Gwyn must have had a wife because Gwyn has assorted children. Um, see, this interpretation is fine. I enjoy interpretation. The issue is the idea that there is a um, fundamental hidden true interpretation uh, that can be ferreted out. That is ultimately the thing that bothers me. Let's see, ban V chopsticks 198. That doesn't look like it worked to me. <laughs> Maybe I need to configure my um, moderation settings. I don't know. Anyway, um, but yeah, so the fact that she is has the iconography of a mother. She is a draped woman holding a baby. Um, and it's hard to see on this low res version, but that frieze depicts uh, men and beasts holding up items, which is easily interpretable as, you know, the realms of the world giving homage to a ruler. So it's theorised that that is her holding the eldest son of Gwyn, the one who is struck, stricken from the annals. Because um, Guinevere is his second child, his eldest daughter, I believe. And then Gwendolyn, everyone loves, of course. But gender is ambiguous. Generally held to be a trans woman by most fans of the game, but uh, people are shitty about that sort of thing, so I'm not going to go into it right now. I need to be careful of this one because he's... Oh, wow, okay. The problem with the um, the rapier guys is that when he's doing that, if I attack him, he will parry and insta-kill me. However, his animations are much faster than the ordinary hollow soldiers, so if I'm not careful, I will get skewered to death. So it's generally best with them to wait for the uh, the stagger off of them attacking and bouncing off of my shield rather than to try and parry because the parry timing is difficult and I am good at games but not brilliant at the parry timing in Dark Souls 1. Not bad at parry timing overall though because I beat Sekiro. Oh, that's an amazing achievement. Tons of people have. Yeah, I know, right? Um, but yeah, so... Let's see if I can sneak up on this one and get stabs. Now, you're actually slightly better at sneaking if you're not wearing boots, so you have to consider it a problem that I decided to wear boots and no top. I should have worn no top and boots. Wait, that is what I'm doing. I should have worn top and no boots. Just go full pussy out look, you know? Come on. Stop spinning, you bastard. Anyway, that's all three of these guys, which means the lower floor is now clear. Did he drop? Oh, he dropped something. Titanite shards are the lowest level... Um, what would you call it? Uh, the lowest level upgrade material. You can use them to make your stuff better. Anyway, this is extremely useful. This is a shortcut back to Firelink Shrine, which is the game's main hub. You won't have seen it this stream, but if you saw the last stream, you'll have seen it then. And of course, if you played the game, you'll have seen it. Oh, I could uh, drop off here and grab a couple items that I will not be using for a while. So, uh, some of you may or may not know, there is a secret area you can get to. The tutorial area of the game can be accessed again if you roll over here and don't fall off and climb all the way up this tower to get a key. Or, no, you get the key off of a rooftop, which is that rooftop. Yeah, so if you grab the key off of this, you can then climb all the way back up to the top and hide in a nest. That crow thinks you're an egg and therefore flies you back. That is the magic crow that takes people here. 
Uh, the iconography of the crow is associated with the goddess Velka, who is the goddess of justice. Her position in the pantheon is unclear because everything in this game is intentionally unclear because it is designed to encourage people to make their own interpretations. Uh, and again, to be clear, I am absolutely here for people examining and interpreting and figuring stuff out. What I object to is the slavish devotion to the idea that there is a singular platonic truth that can be derived. The main reason it's a good idea to come back to Firelink Shrine every now and then is because A. Uh, the fire gives us five more Estus than the other ones, Estus being healing. Which is very confusing to me when I first started playing this because the only... I don't know what the word Estus means, I don't think anyone knows what the word Estus means, but it sounds very similar to Estrus, which is a component of the reproductive cycle. Um, this heavy-browed fellow has sad opinions. Collected bit by bit from corpses. And the quickest way, although I never do it, coveting thy neighbors. This is the crestfallen knight. We'll fight him later. Um, because eventually he gives into despair. Because again, this game is very clear about its themes and um, implements them with a consistency that is admirable. And that sounded that sounded sarcastic, but it's not. Yep, time to reinforce my Estrus flask, which you do with Firekeeper's Souls. If you can find the body of a firekeeper and restore her soul to it, she comes back to life because this one gets killed later in the game and then you can restore her to life by bringing her back her soul. But um, you don't seem to be able to do that with any others in the game, which is curious and may or may not mean something. So I've actually got one liquid humanity, so I should probably return myself to humanness before I head back up. After all, uh, I am heading towards the Belfry Gargoyle boss fight, and I do like to summon Solaire in. Not because I need his help, but because I like his plotline. Several of the NPC plotlines are um, gated by whether or not you summon them in to help you uh, do certain things at certain... Actually, it might just only be... It might only be Solaire that that's true for in this game. Solero, the Knight of Ice Creams. The main benefit of being human is that you can summon people in to help you do your fights, or you can- Oh, I do like how glossy and glisteny her skin is. Anyway, uh, you can summon people in to help your fights, that's other players or certain NPCs, and you can also be summoned uh, by other players to help them in their fights, however you can also oh, be invaded hello. by other players I who will try and you. eat your souls. Does he have anything useful that I can afford? Apparently not. 4,000 for force. I don't I don't need homeward because I don't use that effect very often. Great heal is useful, but it costs 10,000. Oh, uh, ordinary heal is 4,000 as well. We already have ordinary heal, but the way that uh, spells are slotted in the game means that essentially every spell has a number of charges associated with it and takes up a number of slots. Um... So if you equip a spell, it takes up one slot and gives you five charges, for example. That's the case with heal. If you want to equip it again, you need a second physical copy of the spell. Uh, and then f equip it in a second physical... well, not physical, a second slot in your character sheet. Which is an odd way to do it. It's quite idiosyncratic, but I kind of like it. Notice that that just slides straight back into the stone wall. You'd think they'd put a black line there or something to imply a, a gap, but no. Oh yeah, and of course, because I rested at a bonfire, um, all of the ordinary enemies will have respawned. Some enemies do not respawn, such as the channeler up there, who is gone. But, um, yeah, there are theories about whether or not something respawning means something in the context of the world, and I am a little bit too tired to go on and on about them right now. The advantage to fighting these guys on a staircase is that because he is a um, because he is a, uh, <laughs> a side sword wielder, um, you can stab him in the feet, which is useful because it can bi bypass his shield more easily. Also, you can stab past his own attacks. So his attacks, except for the vertical slice, will go over your head, while yours hit him squarely in the feet. Get on my level, bruv. 
Right, so there's only a couple more Baldenites. Yeah, Baldenites up here, and about a zillion shitty little hollows who will attempt to windmill me to death. Generally, uh, on a New Game Plus play, it's usually a good idea just to throw a Chaos Fireball in here so that they'll die of running through lava. But that is not something we can do for a long time. They're pretty easy to parry, but the fact that they do that, like, windmill attack over and over and over and over again uh, means that if you get hit, you will probably die because you will get hit, 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 hit. I think that's all of these guys, these shitty little raggedy men. Which means it's time for loot. Press F to pay respects. Um, yet another hollow with his bum out. There really are a lot of them around. Um, but, you know, that's fine because they will have lovely treasure for me. It's really easy to hit that guy in the head with your bow if you're paying attention, and then you can just stun lock him to death from a long distance. But that is less effective than the old tried and true method of foot stabs. The Hollow Knights are actually. It's relatively easy to provoke them into using healing items, which means that you can then wail on them while they're. Oh god, there was one left! Where the hell were you hiding, sir? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Lordran's kind of an everything out kingdom. Is it even a kingdom? Does it have a king? Even uh, the concept of what Lordran is, as opposed to, say, Anor or Londo, or any of the other nations in the game, are, um up in the air and mysterious. I'm not a fool. I'm not going to fall for that. I love how accusatory it is. It's kind of very... You. I'm watching you. I know what you're like. I know your type. You're going to stab me. And he's not wrong, because I will stab him. Oh, see? That's my trick, not yours. Ow! But yeah, the main uh, benefit to wiping this guy out is that I can grab some stuff upstairs and unlock another NPC. Quite literally. Um, but I'll probably go heal up before I come back around here. I mean, it might be really normal, the Netherlands. I have not been to the Netherlands. You would know better than me since you live there. Um, is the Netherlands a liminal space the size of all universes simultaneously colliding and blending into one another and people having to try and deal with that over the course of thousands of years? It's not quite time for Horrible Bastard Man. He can hide behind this door for a bit longer. Because I want to go find a guy in a bowl. That's not a bowl, it's a... <sighs> I love it when nouns just abandon me. It's ridiculous. Who decided ADHD was a good idea? I'm halfway through a sentence and I forget the word for a, a big a big wooden bowl that you that you keep things in. Um, a barrel. Thank you. It's ridiculous. Anyway. Oh, still human, are you? Then I am in love. Could you help me? As you can see, I am stuck without a pulse. I think you can technically just leave him there for the rest of the game. I think he escapes on his own eventually. Uh, that message does not seem to be disappearing. There we go. Thank you. Yes, sincerely. I am Knight Lautrec of Cadim. I truly appreciate this. And I guarantee a reward. Only later. Lautrec is interesting because he is a very strange man. Yes, very sorry. Your reward will have to wait. I have just been freeing them. Allow me some time. But yeah, uh, sometimes nouns disappear from my brain and I have to try and think of other ways to describe the noun I'm talking about and rely on the kindness of a stranger to tell me what that means. Not that you're a stranger, obviously. You're a very good friend of mine. Um, 
Have I gotten everything up here? I think I have. Uh, so I am going to... You know what, I can do the Belfry Gargoyles with eight charges of Estus, that's fine. But anyway, um, Lautrec basically is considered to be a horrible bastard man, as someone very well put it. Which is because he kills a very lovely and innocent NPC that everyone loves for really no reason. You can summon him to help you with this boss fight if uh, you go back to Firelink Shrine and then get him to move to Firelink Shrine and stuff and then his summon sign will appear over here, I think. But that's a pain in the ass, so I'm not going to bother doing it. I'm just going to get Solaire. Anyway, we've met the three main knights of the game. We have met Solaire. We're about to meet him again. Whoops. Solaire denied. <laughs> Um, and we have met Sigward, not Sigward, Sigmaia of Katarina. Sigward is uh, his counterpart in a later game. I don't know if Heal heals phantoms, but I know Estus does. Oh, Lotrek's absolutely... Well, hmm, actually, see, the problem with kicking Lotrek off the cliff is that... While it is very funny, it does remove a component from the game later on, and generally speaking, I'm in the mood to do an exhaustive playthrough. My, actually, I mean, you know, my fucking 50-hour uh, Let's Play is a very exhaustive playthrough. It might lack the final, like, three episodes, because I never quite finished it, but um, I do absolutely everything in that game, in the game, in that playthrough, so... Uh, this can be less exhaustive. I am going to fucking yeet him off the edge. But that we'll have to wait for a little bit. In case anyone is wondering, and I don't quite get that far in this in this uh, session. Basically, at Firelink Shrine, he appears sitting next to a cliff, which means that if you run up to him and full-on plant a leg on his chest, you can just kick him off the edge. He dies from the fall. The downside is that you don't get his armor and you don't get a boss fight with him later in the game. And like a little narrative questy bit with him later. You do get his ring and his souls though. And his ring is the most useful thing. Where's my sword? There it is. So a lot of people consider this to be the first proper boss in the game. It's not really. I think that, um, well it's the first proper boss, but it's not the first really difficult boss. I say, almost getting smacked off a cliff. What I really want to do is get the tail cut. There's an odd mechanic in this game, which is that uh, most of the enemies in the... Not most of the enemies, several of the bosses in the game, mostly the ones with big tails, can actually have their tails cut off. And if that happens, then uh, you get an item drop based on the tail. Now, the main problem for me is I'm not sure which of these I was working on the tail of. Is it this guy? Yeah. Oh, he's killed it. I don't think I'm going to get a tail chop. Oh, this one's lost its tail. So yeah, extremely easy boss, even if you don't have uh, Solaire's help. But even with Solaire's help, it's nothing. So that is why I think it's wrong for people to consider this the first tough boss of the game, because, like, I wasn't even trying. Hey, he doesn't give you a sword if you cut his tail off. You get, uh, you get an axe made out of his tail. And also, if you kick Lotrek off the edge and reload, what happens is that you find his stuff by the edge of the game. Dark Souls doesn't have a save, like a save point system. Uh, it's constantly auto-saving, and everything that you have done remains done. Everything that happens stays happened. Your choices are permanent, and you have to deal with that. Yeah, it is the long gargoyle axe. It's um, it's his tail severed. Um, actually gives really really good poison resistance so a lot of people will equip it one time and one time only in the game which is while running through a poison swamp later on but it is like um it is like one of those cat toys with the feather on the end of like a, a fishing rod just kind of swish it around So the ultimate goal of this game is to restart reality, to stop it from falling apart. And the way we do that is by ringing a bell, ringing another bell, unlocking the door to heaven, going to heaven, uh, meeting a god, although not the god. Now a lovely detail is that um, with the way the multiplayer works in the game, you are randomly placed sort of in orbit with other players. Um, and if someone in your orbit successfully rings a bell, either this one or the other one, 
Um, you will hear their bell ringing in your game, which I think is absolutely delightful. The multiplayer mechanics are used to reinforce the um, both the themes and the sort of the strange narrative of the game. Which is one of the reasons why it's one of the greatest games of all time, because it perfectly marries its visuals, its narrative themes, its design, its aesthetic, all of it together. It works really well. Now you're talking about T-posing for dominance. He looks like he wants a hug, but I don't have that capacity. What have I got that's the closest to a hug? That's not it, no. So this guy is, um, I believe he worships Velka, who we mentioned earlier. Greetings. I am Oswald of Karim, the past, and our lives are friends. For me, a warm, come at our return. So yeah, Velka is the goddess of justice and sin, and assorted other spheres that are relevant to that. Um, on my Let's Play, I was very careful to avoid spoilers and only talk about things as they became clear narratively th progressing through the game. However, I think I'm just going to talk about whatever as I go through this one. So, a lot of people believe that uh, the events of the game are actually instigated by Velka, because... Gwyn is trying to sustain uh, the existence of the universe. Um, oh, this guy sells some multiplayer items. This one lets you list list guilty players, which lets you which are people you can invade without penalty. Um, people who have done sins, like invading and hurting other players. Um, and that lets you report people to be invaded. He also sell, sells this uh, miracle. Miracles being the faith-based spells rather than the magic-based spells. I, I'm going to assume that I'm a weird and nice person who's still here. Uh, God, what was I even talking about? Uh, right, I was talking about Velka. So he sells uh, magic items for, for faith-based spellcasters. Also, bleed resistance, poison resistance, and a ring of sacrifice, which means that when you die, instead of losing all your stuff, you just keep it all. Nice to know. Um, every NPC in the game, I think, will teach you a gesture. This guy teaches one of the best in the game, which is the kind of one of one of the big community memes. Oh, hey. Also, I'm going to talk to him again because. Whoopsie Daisy. As we said last time, Dark Souls does a really good trade in creepy laughs to end conversations. Uh, anyway, so I was talking about Velka. Um, the thing about Gwyn is that Gwyn is the god of the sun and fire, and there's a whole lot of thematic stuff that I wank on endlessly about um, in the Let's Play, but to put it really simply and blandly, um, he has he figured out a way in which he could be very powerful in this state of existence. It is the nature of existence to change. It is the nature of the universe to be on a cycle. The ending of his realm, his world of civilization, is a natural part of the life cycle of the universe. But he can't accept that. Um, so he figures out a way to prolong his current state of existence. And um, infinitely doing that forever to uh, stop the universe from its natural life and death cycle has resulted in the world, in the universe slowly breaking down and time stopping working and um, different places, different peoples from different times. The world itself falls apart. If you've ever read, um, oh god, what's it called? Um, the, Amer the famous American horror author who does magical realism stuff. Um, well, him. The guy who wrote It and a whole bunch of like really lurid horror stories. Well, if nobody remembers that guy, um, <laughs> his Dark Tower series of books are um, actually dealing with the same concept, which I find interesting. Stephen King, thank you. Uh, like I said, nouns just abandon me periodically. Anyway, we've rung one bell, which means it's time to go figure out where to go next. But so, yeah, um, Gwyn's desire is to prolong the state of existence. He has... Uh, devoted everything to that goal and it has destroyed him. However, it has kept the universe ticking over. 
Um, but it's so unnaturally prolonged that it's rotting from its very center now. I mean, you joke about my distributed memory system. I have a notebook on my desk, literally labeled external memory, which I keep important things I need not to forget in. But yeah, so, um, the thing about, hmm, do I need, uh, but yes, um, anyway, so, after he's done this terrible thing for such a long time, um, some people believe that Velka, as the goddess of justice, has decided it's necessary to, like, force the universe back onto its correct track and therefore allow the universe to die so that everyone can move the fuck on and we can see what happens next. So it makes sense that the goddess of justice and sin would regard such a thing because he absolutely is... Now, hmm. How do I get to the... No, I have to go through Darkroot Garden, that's what I need to do. I forgot the sequencing for a bit. But yes, so that place I went to go get the bows where I need to go back to and if I work my way through there... I can get out the other side, which lets me go to a horrible underground place that everybody hates. Wait, is that where I need to go? Did I get the key? That's the question. There is a key that lets me get into the lower half of the undead berg, and that is where I actually need to go next. Do I have a key? Dungeon cell, big pilgrim, residence, mystery. Basement key, there it is. Okay, right, that's where I need to go next. I usually go to the Darkroot Garden next anyway to do a optional boss first. But, uh, back to Velka. The reason why it's suspected that um, she instigates what's going on is because uh, there's a prophecy, basically, that um, the chosen undead will essentially ascend to godhood by succeeding various trials, overcoming various challenges, getting up into heaven, and getting the favour of the gods. This is a trick, this is a trap laid by Gwen to lure people into um, expending their, the energies of their existence on uh, prolonging the doomed life cycle of the universe, but, uh, and the curse of the undead is considered to be probably a symptom of the universe falling apart, and therefore, oh, I missed the range on that one a bit, um, and therefore kind of the results of Gwyn's own original sin. Oof, okay. So, um, given that, it would be fitting, I think, for Valka to intentionally encourage the escape of the undead from where they are sent, which happens at the very beginning of the game. Um, you escape with the help of a giant crow from the uh, undead asylum, which is where the undead in your particular realm happen to be sent, because every realm deals with the undead in different ways. Uh, nobody knows why, where the undead come from or why they happen. Uh, the fan theory is that it's, you know, the result of Gwyn's bringing about of the curse by prolonging the universe too long. Uh, hmm, actually, if I have 10,000 souls, I should probably spend all those on levelling up instead of only levelling up a bit. But I do want to use a sword soon... soon-ish uh, to go do a place early to get a good item. And I can't remember what stats I need to wield that sword, so I'll just uh, shore up these a little bit, I think. America Londo is something I don't want to think about. But yeah, so, uh, hmm. Is it worth cheesing this guy? I think I'm going to be cheesy. Do I have enough arrows to cheese this guy? I probably do. So, uh, because this guy uses ranged attacks if you stand at the middle distance and there's so much stuff in this area. It's entirely possible to just dodge in and out of cover while headshotting him, not that he has a head. It's also entirely possible to stand in a particular way that he uh, can't actually hit you at all because whenever he starts his attack it gets blocked by positioning. He might be going to come over here and fight me, which would be less than ideal. <laughs> it's unusual that he does that, it's because he's because uh, my positioning meant that he couldn't hit me with his lightning bolts properly. Now if I've aimed this right... nope. If you stand in front of this correctly, the bolt just hits on that block. There we go. Now, if you're really lucky, you can lock him into that position permanently and just sit here shooting arrows for about four and a half minutes. 
which will give me time to finish my thought. So the reason it's suspected that it's Velka is because regardless of whether or not Velka cares about Gwyn as a person, um, the nature of one's existence as a deity requires one to fulfill certain uh, obligations. She is the goddess of sin, the goddess of justice. It's her job to see that justice is done, therefore... Ooh. Therefore it's going to be in her nature to ensure that Gwyn's uh, sins do not go unpunished. Therefore it's going to be in her nature to encourage this stuff for the undead to happen. Her um, sort of totemic animal is the raven. It is a large raven or crow that picks you up from the undead asylum and brings you here to Lordran, the land of the ancient lords. And um, the fact that you then also meet Oswald, who is vaguely, ambiguously helpful to you, also implies... As you can see, this guy st gets staggered as well when his poise gets broken by enough hits. It's, uh, I, it's... Everyone is vulnerable to that, I think. Almost everyone. There's one or two bosses that aren't, I think. But yeah, um, cheesing a boss isn't especially entertaining to watch, I do have to admit. Or a mini-boss, rather. Still, um, I think it's fairly grounded, the idea that uh, you're doing this because Velka is trying to get stuff to happen. If you are seeking a narrative, then it makes sense. If you are merely enjoying the examination of themes, it is less relevant because um, the fact that Gwyn's sin goes unpunished is kind of key to the themes of the centre of the game, or more accurately that it's punished in a more existential sense, as you discover later on. God, this takes forever, huh? Generally speaking, this sort of thing you're expected to come back later, but um, I always feel like Dark Souls encourages you to cheese if you can. But it's more just that I can't be bothered to have to remember to come back, because I'm very forgetful, as you may have noticed. I like that you just jog past Andre and go down into his basement. He's sitting there working at his little anvil. You disappear off into a door, uh, through a door, and you just hear crash, clang, clang, crash, clang. Um, he's actually headless. These things are actually really interesting to me because they're not. It's not headless in the sense that it had a head and lost it. The uh, humanoid body, but one leg and no head thing, is the natural shape of these creatures. They aren't actually. Uh, for lack of a better term, misshapen. They aren't actually changed in their form. Their natural state is one long leg, one short leg, and no head. Because they are said to have sprung forth from a vast slab of titanite, which was forged by the uh, by the blacksmith god, who is, is sometimes considered to be the eldest son of Gwyn, and sometimes not considered to be that. That is another thing that people go back and forth on. And another thing that people indulge in that hateful habit of trying to figure out, trying to argue over what the, like, elemental pure truth is. So we should be able to do a bit more damage to these guys now that we've leveled up a little bit. Um, the leveling in Dark Souls is really, really uh, ungenerous, I would say. It has this interesting thing where you start out like, ah, oh, okay, I can just about save up enough to level up a few things. Right, so if I go through here, that gets me to the lake where the Hydra is and gets me to the back side of the door that leads back up into the Undead Burg with Havel in it. Uh, the lake is a way up to get to Darkroot Garden? I don't want to go there yet. Oh, sneaky sneaky. What was TMI? <laughs> Was it just that I gave too much information in my explanation of, uh... Am I, am I missing some messages in the chat? Is that what's happening? I'm not entirely clear. Um, but yeah, there is there is an explanation as to whether or not they have heads and faces and why. Now, there's a very suspicious bush here. If you look closely, it's poly is different to the- Ow, fuck off! Other bushes in the area. That's because it's one of these guys hiding in the ground. That attack is actually a grab attack that is very likely to kill you. It's really their only powerful attack. I don't really need any of the items they drop, so I can just knock this guy off a cliff and have done with him. Oh, see, like, 
when I talk about being absolute, having been absolutely obsessed with this game a decade, uh, not a decade ago, uh, five years ago, I really fucking mean it. This game was my favourite thing, and um, I did a great deal of my own interpretation of the thematics, and I also learnt a great deal about what other people think of the lore, which is why I have such strong opinions about whether or not you should um, stick to some kind of platonic truth in your beliefs. Now, why would you do that? I thought I was your friend. Why would you why would you hit me with a powerful attack? You should use your weakest attacks. Aha. Uh -huh. But yeah, so it's useful to come through here first because you can fight a optional boss that gives you something useful and you can also pick up some really useful items such as the grass crest shield which I mentioned earlier. A lot later on we need to get to the other side of that door which is possible by taking a long detour around to the other side um, or buying an item for 20,000 souls off of Andre. So see how there's a big pile of bricks here? It sure looks, looks like it's from something that broke, right? Uh, well, what broke was this doorway. Or archway, rather. This is one of the tiny handful of uh, secret walls in the game. Thank you, that's more like what I expected. I don't think... Oh, I do have enough souls to level up once. It's worth spending your souls whenever you have them, unless you have a particular goal in mind. Because... I like to keep my strength and dexterity even because I like to switch weapons a lot, which means that um, the parameter requirements on different weapons have to be managed. And I'm lazy about that, so it's easier just to keep them roughly the same. But yeah, if you die, you will lose everything unless you get back to your bloodstain before you die again. Now, there is a room to my right with a ton of those bush guys in. But the first time you come through here, the bush guys are hiding in the ground. I think they're all standing up later. I'm not entirely sure. You wouldn't think a bush would care about being shot with arrows, but apparently they do. Um, this, is, this should in no way be taken as an instruction for uh, former inhabitants of the White House, incidentally. You know, whether or not you should shoot a bush. I'm, de I'm very definitely only talking about um, large ambulatory plant monsters that will try and eat you with vines. But yeah, uh, there's Grass Crest Shield, which I talked about earlier as being why it's good. There's a few other things. Oh, I think the Wolf Ring is here as well, although that's not really relevant to me yet. Ah, there's the other one. And that one, of course, but this one's a bit closer. Um, oh, wait, hang on. Did they actually drag him out of the White House yet? Because I've been looking forward to seeing the National Guard pulling him out by his fucking ankles. <laughs> Don't say that. You'll get my stream cancelled by the FBI. Why are these guys so much more vulnerable to arrows than to stabs? An arrow is just a stab from far away. Right, anyway, so uh, I should be able to make it through here without much difficulty. That bow will come in... Hmm, actually, how many arrows do I have left? 40, that should be enough for the boss fight. I guess an arrow technically has all of the force of both of your arms. Um, whereas a stab usually has less than that much. So this area is full of more hiding bushes and also big stone men who come to, uh, who wake up and try and kill you. Is that a... that looks like a bush to me. It'd be amazing if there was one that wasn't actually just like a, a tr an actual secret trap bush, but was a real... Um, a real ordinary bush that happened to look identical. Mushrooms? Where were the mushrooms? I didn't see a mushroom. Oh, are you talking about the mushroom children? We won't see them for ages. <laughs> and yeah, um, no, the mushroom children aren't down here. This is uh, this is the side path that leads to the butterfly boss fight. There's no mushrooms here. You need to go all the way around through the Darkroot Basin to see the mushrooms. <laughs> Bitch, you thought. No, my Dark Souls knowledge is supreme. No one knows better than me. Like I said, um, this game is stamped indelibly on my mind. It was my comfort game at the worst time in... Well, not 
the worst. It was my comfort game during a very bad time in my life. Oh, that's that's not good. Uh, do I have moss clumps? I do, because I've been killing plants diligently. These, these guys are actually the most poisonous enemies in the entire game. There are several poisonous enemies and none of them are as, like, virulently poisonous. There's only two of them in the game, though. There's one here and there's one around the corner. Um, I mean, the bow, the bowstring can only have as much force as you can impart to it with your own two arms. It's just that it can store up that force over a longer period of time. Uh, that's how the physics works, I'm told by people who understand physics. It's technically, it's kind of four because they've got two heads each, so it's kind of four snakes. There's the other one. I'll get him from over here. It's a weird design for the monsters in this game. I believe that one of my conclusions when I was... Yeah, I, I, sure, that's... I don't know what that means, but I, I assume you know what you're talking about, because I 100% do not. Right, okay, I'm going to try and clear these knights out one by one, um, so that I can go grab a few other things. Also, um, I haven't mentioned this yet, but all of the, all of the bodies in the game ragdoll... And they, a lot of them have ragdolls based, you know, on their physical form. So these necks, like, have 30 points of articulation. It's it's ridiculous, but I do love it. Uh, the same is true later on of the um, lizard men, who are men with giant snake necks. Because everything in Dark Souls is a little bit weirder than it needs to be. There is a, uh, a big wizard's castle full of them, which... We'll eventually be going to, but not for a while. This is a secret tree. This tree's a. I was going to say this tree's alive, but technically all trees are alive. This tree is uh, ambulatory. Well, it's not ambulatory because it doesn't move. This tree is. Well, I mean, it moves, but it doesn't change position. Still, um, I feel like George the Third chopping down a tree with a sword. Hashtag just British things. One of the mechanics in this game is that um, you equip your hands independently and then you can switch between using both hands on your right hand thing or using your hands separately. So if you two hand a weapon you do a lot more damage. Well I say a lot, you do noticeably more damage. There is a meaningful difference in the game between um, things that leave corpses and things that disappear when you kill them. I have my own personal interpretations about what that means, which I feel are fairly grounded, but you can go watch my old Let's Play. The very first Let's Play I ever did, it's... Um, there's a lot I would do differently if I did it now, however, I do think it my thematic interpretations are solid. Um, huh, okay, well that's good to know. Join me next week for physics stream, where we will learn about physics. But yeah, this, uh, there's two of these trees that are here and only here. There's none of the rest of them in the game. This one wiggles a little bit side to side. It rotates slightly. But uh, I guess that's actually why two-handing your sword does more damage, because you are uh, putting twice the force into the same leverage. So it's relevant and important. I'm disappointed no one laughs at my George the Third gag, but um, Jesus, I hope it was George the Third. For any Americans watching, there was a king who was very, very, very actually, like, full-on insane mad. Um, he had the delusion that he was made of glass, and he made a habit of trying to chop down trees on his estate with his sword. Cannot remember anything else about him. He might have been the king immediately preceding the regency? God, my history's so fucking bad. But, um, yeah, poor guy was very, very, very insane. As I understand it, he wasn't, like, a bad man as a ruler goes, except for the fact that he was an incompetent ruler because he was insane. Not that being insane makes you incompetent in general, but being, like, full-on delusional is not good for someone who needs to have some kind of, some kind of logistical rulership role. See, I should know my history. Also, I love these frogs. These are called frog rays, I think. 
They're very cute. And they also keep killing me with their tongues. Uh, which is not what I want people to do with me with their tongues. You know what? You know what? You know what? You know what? Bow time. Time for bows. Um, anyway, one of the things I think I remember noticing long, long ago was that uh, the things that respawn are either undead or... Oh, the arrow hit two at once. That's unusual. Are either undead or living creatures that might reasonably have repopulated. Um, because when you die, you respawn at a bonfire. That's not you going actually, like, back to a saved point. That is... Everything that happened stays happened. Now this should be the grass crest, I think. Nope, that is a solo proud knight. Where the hell is the grass crest shield? I thought it was over here. Hmm. 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 Oh. Oh. Hmm. 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 Anyway, um... Oh fuck, I woke a guy up. Right. Uh, let's try and actually fight with a sword. These guys have a spell, but I think they only cast it once. And it's very important that I escape them when they cast the spell. It's called uh, Tranquil Walk of Peace, and it stops you being able to run or dodge. And if you try to run or to dodge, uh, you basically fall over. There it is. Time to get away. So I think it lasts 30 seconds, and it's an AoE around him. If I get within a certain radius of him, I will have that happen to me. Makes it very difficult to not die. So the main thing you need to do is just evade them until the spell wears off, and then he won't have his aura kill you. Ah, a uh, grass crest shield might be up there, actually. Unless that's where I got into this area from, I'm not sure. Alright, are we good? I think we're safe. Yes. Okay, good. Because uh, obviously against something so large and powerful, it's generally a bad idea to rely on blocking, because he will just smash through your poise. Similarly, I don't think he's parryable because he's a large man made of stone. And I don't know if you've ever done any Hema or anything, but... Um, Generally speaking, they advise against trying to parry large men made of stone if you don't want to basically get killed by a large man made of stone. Ooh, he dropped a stone greatsword. Very nice. I think that takes like 30 strength to wield. 40 strength. Fucking hell. Um, It's one of the heaviest weapons in the game. As you can see, my current sword does 78 damage. That one would do 248 Uh, half of which is magic. The magic damage is actually really useful. Um, but I don't really feel... Uh, oh, it's near the Drake's Valley? I don't... Th no, I don't think that's where the Grass Crest Shield is. Um, or do you mean... Do you mean the lift down there? It, m it might be where the lift is, I think. Yeah, that's the other... That's the other path. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's where the lift down to the Valley of the Drakes is. Hmm, Okay. Still, I've slain this titan, and that's the important thing. So I think I came into this area from over here. Yeah, that's where the tree was, right? So where I need to go is up here. I think this leads around to the wolf ring. One of the advantages to the grass crest shield, and why it's such a good item to have, is that um, unlike most enchanted shields, its, its effect remains happening when you have it equipped on your back. Like this, when you're two-handing a weapon, which means that you can um, just be more efficient with your with your stuff. No, that sounds right. I think that is where I would look for it if it wasn't where I thought it was. And it wasn't where I thought it was, and therefore that's where I'll look for it. <laughs> uh, language is fun. Oh, time to run. It's not mega difficult to fight him. Uh... Well, he's got Tranquil Walk of Peace active, but I don't like to do it because my instinct is to dodge constantly and therefore I always end up tripping over my own feet. But I am also bad at judging the length of time it lasts. It might only be 10 seconds. Yeah, if you don't intend to use shields, it's the best shield to have because you can have the passive effect running from it being on your back. Are we good? I think we're good. It's bad to fight this guy in an enclosed space, generally speaking. I think I need to put some points in stamina. You know what? I'm just going to draw him outside. Like so many... Oh, no, I forgot this guy won't come outside, will he? No, he always backs up if you get outside. Um, 
some of the enemies in the game have their... Oh, wow, that shouldn't have hit me. They actually have their pathfinding locked to certain areas, and if you go outside that... Oh, fuck. Well, I guess um, pen the pendulum of uh, misaligned animation swings both ways, huh? I love that I'm doing exactly 10 damage every hit. It's very rare that you see that sort of thing. Ooh, I got his shield as well. Very nice. I bet that also takes 40 strength. Let's see. Thirty-eight, pretty much the same. Um, hundred percent physical, eighty magic, seventy-five fire. That's actually a really good shield, huh? Time for confused turtle attack style. So what have I got? I've got a short sword. Oh, have I been using a short sword this entire time? I thought I had a long sword. That explains it a little bit. Um, I guess you could say my <laughs> my sword is a lot less long than I thought it was. Um, but let's not shame sword length, because that's rude. Yes, this is where the, uh, this is where the wolf ring is. I am a genius. Yeah, that's in Dark Souls 3, I think, the two-door shield thing. Um, I can't remember. I think it's, it's either two shields that you equip on either hand, or it's one shield that takes up both slots, which I think is the only item that takes up two slots in the game. Pretty sure that's Dark Souls 3, and I'm pretty sure it was added in one of the DLCs. But yeah, I am going to have to get a, get a hold of a proper sword at some point. This is ridiculous. And not one that takes 40 strength to wield, because it's very difficult to hit 40 strength. You have to base, put basically every single level up for an entire run through of the game into strength alone to get to 40 strength. Well, I mean, like, a third of all of your level ups. There's nothing more to do down here, so we just zoom along. Right, so next I want to clear these guys out one by one. Do I have anything useful? Oh hey, I have a, a green blossom. That is useful actually. But I'll save it for later. Killed the poison things. Do I have anything I want to equip? I do not. How's my equipment load? Still 50 max, which means I need less than 12.5, so there's no point trying to fiddle a little bit of extra stuff in. Right. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear out this area, I'm going to go fight the Moonlight Butterfly, and then I'm going to call it a night. Don't know. <laughs> okay, don't let me forget to call the Moonlight Butterfly a night, okay? But it's good that I'm human, because there is an NPC you can summon in for that fight. And if you summon her for that fight, you can summon her for another fight much later on where she will either be useless or literally just kill the boss for you. And it's kind of random. Oh, time to run. I used to think that if you escaped the radius before it happened, um, he didn't like hit you with it. But it's actually just an aura that's locked to him, I think. I'm pretty sure. Or... No, there it is. Yep, okay. I may have screwed myself. Ah, there it is. It's faded. I think it's closer to like 15 seconds rather than 10. Uh, 13. I really need to get out of the habit of spending all of my stamina on attacks. Because your stamina bar recharges faster if you have some left. Much like the Gatorade that it is filled with. I don't know if you know this, but if you leave a half-empty bottle of energy drinks in your fridge, um, it will actually refill a lot faster than going to the shop and buying a new bottle. Now there's a ton more hiding, uh, hiding plants over here somewhere. There's a lot of detail in this area, so you tend to get uh, slightly chuggy, because this is not Dark Souls Remastered, this is Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition, the OG game from when it first came to PC. Which means that it is optimised really badly, which means it chugs like a motherfucker in areas where there's a lot of stuff happening. I am intending to... Um, I am intending to upgrade my CPU, but I don't think that will make a difference to games like this, because this is just kind of how it is. I'm just returning twigs to this thing, I don't know why it's bothered so much. 
Ooh, that one dropped something. It's probably more moss. Come on, there we go. Yes, blood red moss. Blood red moss, the least useful moss in the entire game. Uh, in a game cho uh, chock full of moss and moss related byproducts. Yeah, no, my, my main goal here is to just return their twigs one by one. <coughs> there's definitely like four more of them around here. I think there's like three more stone knights and then several more uh, bushes. What have I killed? I've killed Jeb Bush, I've killed George Bush, I've killed George Bush Senior. I can't think of any more bushes, but I know there are some. Uh, this is a forest, but it's kind of a damp forest. There is an actual swamp later on, which is in the literal actual sewage runoff of the entire universe. I'm not joking. Every Dark Souls game makes you run through an actual lake of shit at some point. And um, I must remember to go do the tutorial zone redux section first, because it drops a very useful item that lets you not be really slow in the mud. Um, this is technically dark. There is a dark root forest, but it's not this. I don't think this is. Is this dark root basin? There's dark root basin, dark root garden, and I think dark root forest, and they're all different places. There's one stone knight. I think there's another one on the other side of him, but I'm not sure if is that alive or is that dead. That's dead. So the real trick with these two is to aggro only one of them, because if you aggro both, you have a hard time fighting both. Come on, guy. Don't be terrible. There we go. <laughs> That's the real trick. That's the real pro strats. The other trick is to lure him over here to fight him so that you don't accidentally wake the other one up by getting too close. Now, sir, would you mind... Would you mind wasting your spells so that I don't have to worry about it? No, sir, that's not a spell. That's the opposite of spells. That is melee attacks. There we go. Time to run away. Didn't quite make it in time. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Tune in on Wednesday for my numbers spa station special, if you enjoy my voice counting endlessly. That's not a real thing, by the way. Although maybe it should be. Uh, hello, yes, are you going to bed? Oh, thank you. I appreciate that very much. I also agree on rare occasions. The trick is uh, <clears throat> to not speak for an hour and a half constantly, solidly. I never knew how to fall. Yeah, no, you probably should go to bed. You need your sleep. Don't forget you, baby. But yeah, so I never actually realised how physically demanding streaming is. Uh, I thought, you know, I make Let's Plays. I can talk while playing video games. I think I'd be really good at this cool art form that I admire, streaming. Uh, I will remember to call the butterfly a knight. I won't. I already forgot. But yeah, I was like, hmm, yeah, so, like, I know how to talk while playing a video game because I already do that um, to make Let's Play episodes. And then I streamed for the first time and I was like, yeah, this is alright, this is like 40 minutes, I can manage that. And then I streamed the second time and I made it to like an hour and I was like, oh, I guess I talk like this now. Because, yeah... It's, it's also emotionally demanding. Like, I've always heard like people talk about, oh, I like to stream because it's fun and, and I, enjoy, I enjoy playing the game and people watching me play the game and stuff. Nobody ever says, like, wow, this is actually physically demanding, both through your voice and, like, just overall. And then it's also, uh, like, emotionally draining to, oh, shit, I'm out of arrows. Okay, right, well, hmm. I don't want to fight the... Uh, butterfly without arrows, so I am going to sprint all the way back to Andre, buy some arrows and then sprint all the way back here and it'll be fine provided I don't rest at the bonfire, because if I rest at the bonfire then everything will respawn. Things I would conveniently edit out of a Let's Play episode. 
But this, this is actually a performance form that I would I genuinely want to be good at. It's a performance form I think I can be good at, and it's a performance form I want to learn to do better. Which is not to say I think I'm bad at it, I think I'm good at it, but I think I also have potential. Do I seriously not have a longsword? I thought for sure I had a longsword somewhere. Short sword, great sword, mace, morning star, partisan, halberd, longbow, light crossbow, talisman, canvas talisman, caduceus round shield, east west shield, um, east west six, dogger bank, nil, um, and other highlights from the fishing forecast. I must not forget about that guy. I swear to god my sword is shorter than it was earlier. Yeah, these guys respawned because I rested at the bonfire close to where the boss is, but I absolutely do not want to rest again because I don't want the knights to respawn before I go to uh, Fighty Town, before I go to Fighty Town where I have a big fight. Because it's very important to be very, very, very violent on a nice day in the woods. Actually, I guess it's night here. Um, I mean, it's dark. It's called Dark Root Garden, and it's visibly dark. And when you're in the open bits, you can look up and it looks dark. Are the times of day in this game tied to where you are physically in the world? And if so, is that supposed to be sort of thematic of the universe? Not thematic, representative of the universe falling apart? Or is that just supposed to be... Oh, God, my heart. I thought the game crashed for a second there. Um, but yeah, I've forgotten what I was saying, so that's fine. The butterfly boss is pretty easy, you just need loads of arrows to shoot it with. Or a wizard to uh, help you shoot it. We will naturally be doing both, because I like to stack my advantages so that I can just completely destroy whoever faces me. Large arrows are more expensive, uh, but they do more damage. How many can I get? A hundred? Yeah, that'll do me fine for now. At certain points through this game, I come back to him with like 8,000 souls and just completely fill my inventory to 999 with arrows. Which I guess you would need... Hmm, okay, if it's 10 per arrow, you would need 10,000 souls just under that to get a full inventory completely full of arrows. I wish this game had the gag they have in some of the Elder Scrolls games where if you get shot with an arrow, it gets added to your inventory. I've always wondered if that was an intentionally coded thing or if that was just like a weird coincidental behaviour that accidentally happened. Because it's a clever idea and a funny idea, but who would have thought of that? Anyhow, oh god, I'm so hungry. Why am I hungry? I had dinner not that long ago. It must be all the delicious fruit that's in this place. There's no fruit. Although the moss does look quite tasty. Jules, could you um? Oh yeah. Uh, I'm I, I genuinely will cook you dinner next time we are. Well, if we are ever in the same geographical location, I will 100% cook for you because I've seen some of your cooking and some of your cooking is kind of atrocious. No offense. Um, it makes me want to feed you and um, pat you on the head. Oh, that guy's still alive. Might be a little wet. Thanks, Jules. That's really helpful. Okay, note to self. Next time, use the big mug, not the small mug. And yes, I'm 100% talking about your cauliflower with tilapi, which consists of cauliflower and tilapi and nothing else. Ah, uh, aha. Sneaky, sneaky. I forgot to equip my arrows. Oh god, I came to I came to arrow prom without my arrows again. Fucking hell. Is he stuck? Okay, well the other one doesn't seem to be pathing to me, and the other guy seems to be stuck, which gives me plenty of time to fiddle with my inventory, so to speak. Yeah, I wasn't sure why you cooked that. Like, I got that it was efficient, but it's it was heartbreaking to see, frankly. Um... Can I get some arrows into the- is he- is he genuine- is his pathfinder completely broken? No, okay. Usually if you wake them up, they path to you, they aggro at that moment. I've not seen them forget to do that before. <laughs> He's stuck on trees again. Sir, you're too large for this jurisdiction. Oh, he's just gonna block all of those.
Okay, time to count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. That should be fine. Yeah, okay, so it's definitely twenty seconds or less. You can actually get that spell yourself later on. It's great for throwing out unexpectedly in PvP matches. Because no one really expects a player to have it because it's not very efficient, but it's also, um, basically they have to zone away from you or, uh, be slaughtered, so. <laughs> Speaking of being slaughtered. Come on, one more solid hit should do for him. Yeah, you see, uh, I do 14 instead of 10 if I two-hand my sword. Did he drop something? Nope. Righty ho. Uh, so I mentioned before that um, all of the potential starting classes you can pick, the only thing they change is the equipment you start with and the uh, uh, the stats you start with. And all of those people exist within the game. You find their corpses and they have those specific sets of starting gear on them. There's a guy. Is there another guy? I see a guy. You're not even capable of being the guy. You are not the guy. Bit worried about being that low on uh, faster heal. Oh, are you stuck as well? Who put you here? Although, the idea that these guys predate the trees, that they were lying here and the trees grew around them is a fun idea. I think I like that. Oh shit, that's the spell. That's what happens if you try and dodge when you've got that spell cast on you. And it is not good because if you do that, they will just fucking kill you. Oh yeah, my house too. It's really common. We all fucking love it. We look at each other and we go, bong, 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 bong. Or we start uh, saying, you're not even capable of being the whatever it is we're talking about. Jules is now dancing, which I think she's doing in the hope that I would say that on stream to the lot of you. Because I think she's invested in being this kind of curious, puckish figure who shows up from time to time. I do actually intend to set up face cam. I think that the opinions of the people I've asked are split on whether or not they would appreciate that, but um, you know what? I'm vain, I'm gorgeous, and you all deserve to look at me. But uh, when I was setting up to do my first stream, I was looking for my camera. I could not find my old webcam. I don't know where it is. And since I'm also being evicted, it seems pointless to set that kind of situation up. Like, if I'm just gonna have to move to a new flat and then do set it up again, why bother? And it'll probably, if I find my webcam, I'll probably find it while I'm packing to leave. So, you know, why bother for now? Um, but yeah, I think I will ask for more opinions before I decide, but my inclination is to do face cam. At least on my good days where I look very good. How many of you fuckers are there? I think this is the last one. Spell, please. Ow, that's not a spell, that is sword. That is spell. I think it gives me just enough time to cast heal before he catches up with me. I'm a genius. And I'm very good at video game. Although I forgot to start counting and now I don't have a timer. So I guess like, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten is probably enough. Yep, okay. How long does that even last? I genuinely thought it was 30 seconds, but it's clearly not. Anyway, uh, after this guy, we straight up to the boss after I wake up. Uh, is it Beatrice? There is a kindly wizard who helps us fight a butterfly, which sounds like something from a much more twee game than Dark Souls. I should have been two-handing these guys the entire time. That was much faster. And they're slow enough that I can just dodge their attacks. Uh, it's fascinating to me how much better I am at this game than when I did my first um, my first big let's play of it. I say my first. My first big let's play, which was a let's play of this. I haven't done multiple let's plays of this game because I'm not insane. Well, I mean, I am insane. I'm not that kind of insane. Now, if I kick these out of the way, there's a secret summon sign for secret best NPC, which Beatrice. Unlike Lautrec and um, Solaire and Siegmeier, 
who all have uh, plot lines that occur during the game based on assorted things, including whether or not you summon them to help you with bosses. Which Beatrice, I believe, was supposed to have some kind of a plot line like that, and she is summonable for two bosses. If you summon her for this one, you can then summon her for the four kings later on. Which is fucking difficult, let me tell you. Um, but uh, in both of those boss fights, she's either completely ineffectual, or she just fucking dumpsters the boss. Uh, which I assume is a kind of a pathfinding and like AI decision-based thing, if like her algorithms work the right way, she does good. So, from time to time you can shoot arrows at it. They don't seem to be hitting it. And then it casts spells that you need to dodge. Or indeed just get shot by. I really don't want to die to this thing. I haven't died to this boss in like 10 runs of this game. So the two of you just cast spells at it and it gets wrecked. Um, the spell I am casting is Long Range Stab. In fact, I can just let her finish it off. So yeah, toughest boss fight in the game, the Moonlight Butterfly. Anyway, uh, Witch Beatrice doesn't have any dialogue. You can summon her for two boss fights. Um, I think that she was intended to have more stuff, but yeah. The main reason I do this is because it's really, really easy to win this boss fight, even without Witch Beatrice, uh, provided you just remember to dodge and shoot. If you have spells, it's really easy because you can shoot your own spells that do massive damage. But uh, also, if you're like a heavy two-handed type, then if you just wait for it to land, you can smash it to bits because it's a butterfly. Uh, they are not known for being the most resilient of creatures, generally speaking. So yeah, it drops 10,000 souls, which is kind of low in the grand scheme of things, but it's plenty for a boss at this stage. I think that's the same amount the gargoyles dropped, who also just got dumpstered. And here we find a fossilized version of Andre. The question of whether or not this is an alternate version of Andre... Uh, also, huh, I believe that was the new follower noise. And my flatmate is waving and pointing at herself, so I guess I shouldn't cheer for having enticed a rando to join my my cadre of uh, worshippers, but, um, oh well, better than nothing. Anyway, <laughs> what the hell was I talking about? Right, yes, so all of the embers in the game are near the bodies of calcified blacksmiths, who look identical to Andre. Uh, people theorise that this means that it's different versions of him from different timelines, people also theorise that it might be, um, his brothers or his cousins or whatever. There is zero indication of who any of them are. They are just, there is nothing said about them. There is, they're just, there's just the fact that they're there and you can interpret them how you want. Um, my personal opinion is that that's just what blacksmiths look like in general. So I suspect that basically FromSoft's designers wanted it to be clear what you should do with this item. So they gave it to a dead NPC who looks like the one guy you know who does forging. So you think, oh, that looks like Andre, I'll go talk to Andre, and then Andre goes, oh, cool, an ember, I can use that to make stuff. Which is a solid way of design working. <laughs> so clumsily phrased, but uh, I'm, I'm going to stand by it. So coming back up here, there's that bonfire. I'm just going to run all the way. Actually, no, that won't work. There's an item called the Homeward Bone, which um, if, you, if you use it, it teleports you to your most recently rested bonfire. I think my re most recently rested bonfire was, in fact, that one just behind us, which isn't where we want to go. So, where we want to head next is back up to the bridge between the Undead Burg and the Undead Parish. That lets us get down... Hmm, actually, I could go up in this shortcut. Now... I think I will just clear out this area. I was going to stop for the night here, but I will keep going a little bit longer. So yeah, uh, this should hopefully lead us to where the grass... Oh, I remember where the grass crest shield is now. It's hidden behind the silver knight who's over here. That's where it is. I'm sure of it. Um, so yeah, uh, you find the silver knight here. You fight the silver knight. If you are lucky, you beat him. If you aren't, he beats you. If you are very lucky, you beat him and he drops his useful halberd, which you can basically just clear the rest of the game with. Um, most of these silver knights and black knights have low chances of dropping very good weapons, and if they do drop them, congratulations, you can clear the game with it. He's definitely over there somewhere. Pro 
probably should have not uh, let myself get damaged. Oh, I didn't mean to use my Estus, I meant to heal. Oh well. I think he's just past this final switch back here. You can get a drop attack on him if you're lucky. That's the Grass Crest shield over there. Um, I forgot to say good night to the... I forgot to say good night to the butterfly. God damn it. Oh well. Yeah, a lot of the game is, is dead, but um, this place is fairly verdant. I think he's over there. Where is he? There he is. Uh, haha. Right, you can get drop attacks on him if you're lucky, which I did not. Uh, since I'm low on health, I don't want to risk dying. Although if I do die here, that's not the end of the world because it's quite close to both of the bonfires. But um, I'm just going to cheese this guy. I'm going to... Uh, wait for him to do an attack that leaves him open and then I will backstab him and then I will do that over and over and over until he's dead. If you get lucky, there's enough of a window that you can- oh fuck! <laughs> well, problem solved, I guess. Um, I guess he really wanted to make sure I died, huh? So, that's not the end of the world. It's a shame I lost my humanity. Um, Obviously, my liquid humanity I can pick up out of my bloodstain, but uh, the one point of humanity it costs to become human has been lost. But uh, I should be able to go pick up that bloodstain without any problems, especially considering that knight is now dead. I wonder if I can make some kind of... Oh, uh, yeah, so since you don't know much from Dark Souls, I will explain to you. Uh, humanity is one of the two, like, it's sort of like XP. Um, souls are your standard experience points. You gather those and then you spend them to level up. And um, humanity is more of a sort of an abstract thing. If you have humanity, um, it sort of ticks up. And the more you have, the more likely you are to get good drops of items. And I think the higher resistances you have to, you know, um, elemental attacks and curses and things. So, um, yeah, if you die, both your the humanity that you happen to have in you at the time, your humanity score, and also your souls that you happen to have on your person, both get put into your bloodstain. Uh, if you make it back to your bloodstain without dying and pick it back up, you get all of that stuff back. Um, and the difference between liquid humanity and hard humanity is hard humanity is the item humanity which you have in your inventory. Activating a humanity item gives you one liquid humanity and restores your hit points. Liquid humanity is counted in the circle in the upper left hand corner of the screen currently. So um, obviously having liquid humanity is good because it increases your drop chances but it's also bad because you might lose it if you die twice in quick succession. It costs one point of liquid humanity to turn yourself into a human being rather than a hollow, which is what I currently am. However, being a human being has some downsides, as the upside of that you look less gross and also that you can summon people in to help you and you can go help other players. However, uh, it also makes you vulnerable to PvP players invading you and trying to kill you to take your humanity. I generally like through like playing through the game with lots of humanity. Um, or rather, I like playing through the game while being a human, however... Um, I'm bad enough at PvP that if I get invaded I usually die. Uh, if it's someone being fair and reasonable and just PvPing for the fun of it with whatever they have, that's fine. However... Oh, I didn't regain a... I must not have had a liquid humanity. Maybe I spent it. Maybe that's why I was human. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah, th unfortunately most people who PvP have figured out how to game the bracketing system so that the people, they, they are the strongest you can possibly conceivably be at a given power level. Now, there's a ton of monsters and some items I could grab here, including a uh, big mini-boss type thing, but I'm going to skip it and just run straight past because this is actually, I think, the shortest route to where I want to go. And, oh, I was going to stop after that. Oh, well, I'll keep going for now. So there's a mini-boss in here called Havel. He drops some really good items, but he drops a really good item, but I don't actually want to fight him right now because he's tough. Uh. Ladies and gentlemen, Dark Souls. I forgot he hides behind the door. 
So the first time you play through Dark Souls, traditionally, uh, the way you succeed is by inching around every corner like this with your shield up, just in case. Uh, I do want to point out that would not have saved me in this instance because he hit me from behind and also that fucking giant hammer he has um, does so much poise damage that it doesn't matter if you're blocking, it will still, it won't even um, like eat the, eat the block without you taking damage, it will just fucking smack you to the floor and crush you. <laughs> it's one of the heaviest weapons in the game. He's not difficult to fight, um, it's just that I forgot he lurks by the door, I thought he was further inside the room. He's very easy to uh, chain backstab if you know what you're doing. Uh, however, he is very fast for someone with such a heavy weapon. So I'm going to go grab my bloodstain, hopefully. Um, your bloodstain usually spawns a few seconds back from where you died so that you have a chance of regaining it if, for example, um, someone lured you into an ambush and squashed you, squashed you literally flat like a pancake. His whole deal is that um, he was, like, he was basically... Not the Pope, exactly, but he was uh, he was a very ardent worshipper of the god Gwyn, um, who at some point lost his mind and possibly became hollow, became an undead. So for, quote, his own protection, and uh, let's put in brackets with an asterisk, actually everybody else's protection, um, he was locked in a tower. I think possibly by Gwyn, or possibly someone else did it after Gwyn did what Gwyn does after, after he did the big sad fire thing. Because King Big Sad Guy, as the meme goes, did the flame thing. But yeah, he do be tough. Um, he drops the heaviest armor set in the game. Well, he doesn't drop it. You can get it later in the game, but he has the heaviest armor set in the game, uh, which is made of plate armor made out of stone. Um... It might not be the heaviest, but it's definitely one of the top three because the giant, the brass giant armor is also very heavy, and the stone giant armor is also very heavy. I'm not sure if Havel's set is the heaviest, um, but he drops a ring when you kill him, and his ring basically makes uh, what is it? It improves your equipment load. It lets you wear more stuff before you start to have the wow. Okay, Jesus. Uh, yep, that's what I need to do. Love to heal. Um, but yeah, so he... Um, his ring basically makes your equipment load way easier. The way that equipment load works is that um, if you're wearing more than a certain amount of armor, you get a slower rolling thing with fewer iframes, so it's harder to dodge. And if you're wearing above another threshold, um, you roll really slowly and are almost stunned at the end of it. I can't believe I forgot to come back for the grass crest shield. Absolute foolishness. So, as you can see, the Grass Crest shield has 95 instead of 100% physical damage reduction, but the trade-off um, of the stamina regen bonus you get is worth it. Oh, hey! Hi, Maverinthia. Nice to see you. I don't know if you've just joined us or if you've been here for a while, but <laughs> you're just the very tail end of this stream, unfortunately. It's lit, fam. Uh, actually, isn't that a procreation of AAVE? I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that. So this is a tunnel that leads to a lift, and that lift leads, leads down to the Valley of the Serpents, which is a way to get a hold of some items I want to grab. I should get my bloodstain first so that I don't risk losing my 10,000 souls. Um, but I do actually want to come back here because there is a sword in the Valley of the Drakes, uh, which has, uh, what's it called? Divine enchantment, which means it does magic damage, and if you kill respawning skeletons with it in the one area of the game where there are respawning skeletons. Actually, there's two areas. Anyway, if you kill a respawning skeleton, it stays dead. Which is useful. For obvious reasons. So hopefully I can f get a hold of my bloodstain without Havel fucking tonking me again. In fact, I had so many... So I have got so many souls in that bloodstain that I think I'm going to use my Ring of Sacrifice. Rings of Sacrifice are the only consumable rings in the game. If you wear a Ring of Sacrifice and die, then when you uh, respawn at the bonfire, you still have all of your souls and all of your liquid humanity. You don't have a blood stain to go get. Um, and the rare Ring of Sacrifice will also prevent... Hmm, actually, either the ring or the ring rare ring will also retain your humanity status. Now... 
is it worth trying to fight him again? He's. I know he's waiting. I know he's right fucking there. I think it's probably a better idea to come back another time. If you uh, if you come down the tower from above, you can see him before he sees you, which is, generally speaking, a lot safer. And now that I've opened this door, that does actually give me a place to retreat and heal up if I want to fight him next time, because I don't think he can get through the doorway. Some enemies in the game are restricted um, that way because of... Uh, what would you call it? Um, the hitboxes. However, some have like set pathfinding areas that they will not walk outside of. Much like the um, stone knight I was fighting earlier, who started retreating back up the passageway. So, I need to get back up here. And uh, yeah, we're drawing to a close on this one, but I'm very proud of how this one's gone. I think I've done well. I have not made it for a full two hour thing while constantly remembering to talk and be on properly the entire time yet, which is good because that implies that I am gaining in skill. Um, and I do want to get good at streaming because I think I have potential. You know, not to blow my own trumpet relentlessly, but fuck it. I'm great at everything. Oh, I know what that noise means. There is a... this guy. You, sir, are a nuisance, and I will not stand for it. Time for some aggressive pruning. Which is also what happens if you spend too long in the bath. Thank you, Julia. You're very sweet, but also you do live in my house, so you have to be nice to me. Hmm? Problem? Ow. Problem? Problem? No, that's not a thing. That's nothing. Uh, where the fuck am I? Have I gone the wrong way? I fucking have gone the wrong way. Oh, well. You know what? I do need to stop because my voice is getting sore. What I meant to do was go down to the Valley of the Drakes and get that item I want to get, but that's fine. We can go this way instead. And I will go there next time. I just need to remember to do it. Problem? Problem? Yeah, um, hollowing, extreme pruning, is what happened when the god Gwyn, the god Gwyn, spent too long in the bath, the fire. Jokes that will make sense if you know Dark Souls. I like that if you choose to be a priest, you start with lower intelligence than all the other classes. Um, not to let my opinions show or anything. Uh, no, I, do I want more attunement? No, I don't have any more spells yet. I do want to put my endurance up there. So. Um, actually, just to be clear, um, I think that religion is very useful to a lot of people, and I think there's nothing inherently wrong with it as a concept. However, I do think that organised religion as it exists in the world is... Uh, Generally speaking, a bad force. Generally speaking. Also, I am of the opinion that um, most religious initiative is generally sort of anti self examination. You're supposed to take things on faith rather than looking at everything and making your own decision, which is my opinion. So that should be just enough souls to level up one more time. Yeah, there we go. And that's the way the Dark Soul crumbles. Um, I mean, as much as I love Andre, his endless hammering gets on my fucking nerves. So, yeah, I think that's going to be all from me for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I had way more uh, people, I had way more viewers than I was expecting for such a short announcement time. I only announced this like two hours in advance. Um, especially on a week night. But, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. I cannot comprehend that many emojis. I need to learn the Twitch emoji keyboard. But yeah, so it's been great to see you all. Thank you for joining me. Eventually these um, eventually these streams will be going up for uh, on YouTube. I was planning to edit them fairly heavily, but the fact that I can apparently keep talking for two hours solid means that that's going to be more, more of a difficult task than I thought. Anyway, that's not relevant. You don't need to see how the sausage is made. 
uh, join me uh, tomorrow night for the next Hollow Knight stream if you want to keep up with that. If not, don't worry, it's going up on YouTube eventually or you can watch it on the VODs on here. That's everything. Great. Um, thank you so much for watching and for joining me.